<laughs> How's it going everyone? Welcome. I'm wearing a hoodie and it's June. Bloody English weather, eh? Jack Colback, someone that used to be a bit ridiculed by neutrals, made out to be a bit of a joke. But to Nottingham Forest fans, he should be held in the highest capacity. A modern day legend for what he's achieved for us. 134 appearances in five years, taking us from being a bang average championship side to being a promotion championship side to being a Premier League side. Please everyone, hit the like button, subscribe to Rads if you're new, we're nearly at 5k, less than 100 away now, so that would be rather splendid if we could get there. Don't know why I went to that word, but it just felt right. Jack Colback, let's rewind all the way to the start of his career, shall we? Jack Colback would represent Sunderland for 16 years, racking up 115 appearances, scoring four goals. Bear in mind, a large portion of that time, he was in their youth academy, only being a senior player at Sunderland from 2008 to 2014, which is still a good period of time. He would be loaned out to Ipswich for one and a half seasons during this period as well and would really light it up for them, winning their Player of the Season award in 2009-10. He'd go back on loan to Ipswich for the first half of the next season and would slowly but surely find his way into becoming a regular at Sunderland. He got sent off on his debut after two bookable offences for Sunderland. And yeah, this wouldn't be something that he's too unfamiliar with as his career goes on. It is worth pointing out that in the 2010-11 season, for two games, Colback would play at left-back. This central midfielder playing at left-back, what's that all about? Overall, Colbert would represent Sunderland for three consistent seasons, playing roughly 30 plus games every year, which is a decent amount of football. He would turn down a new deal though in the 2013-14 season and had let his contract run out until he would sign for Sunderland's arch rivals Newcastle United. This isn't quite as insane as it sounds. Going from Sunderland to Newcastle is like going from Forest to Derby. You don't do it under any circumstances. However, Colback was actually from Newcastle, so why wouldn't he? You know, he may have been playing for their arch rivals for 16 years, which is arguably more insane, the fact that he even went to Sunderland Youth Academy. So, yeah, I don't think you can really blame him too much. He did actually state, majority of Sunderland fans will hate me for the rest of my life when he joined Newcastle. I have a feeling you might be right there, Jack. He would be contracted to Newcastle for six seasons. I say contracted because he didn't exactly play for them for six seasons. He played three regular seasons pretty consistently for them until they were promoted back to the Premier League, having been relegated, of course, previously. And that promotion back up to the Prem really spelt the end for Colback at Newcastle. And he'd be out in the dark for the first half of the 17-18 season until Nottingham Forest came calling desperately in need of a few players, having just lost 3-0 to Preston North End at home. That was not a nice game. In fact, Colback was one of 10 new signings on deadline day in January that season. So, Maranakis, even back then, was going a bit insane with transfers. And Colback didn't just come in and get some regular football and, and just, you know, kind of help Forest out. He was absolutely integral. He played every second of football possible, minus one match in which he was on the bench against Barnsley. That's no mean feat. Going into the next season, the 18-19 season, he would be immediately loaned back to Forest, this time with the option to buy, and again would become a staple of this team. In fact, he'd captain the side a lot during the second half of that season. As I mentioned previously, he did like getting booked. 15 yellow cards, 15 yellow cards this season. So that meant he missed six games due to suspension. So um, yeah, learn your lesson, Jack. Don't get sent off or, or booked as much. He would be a key part of this team though, that came ninth in the championship, an improvement on 17th from the year before, so much better for Forrest. He did miss the final few games of the season due to suspension, believe it or not, but I'm saying that because the two games before he was suspended, he was playing at left back again. So again, throughout his career, he quite frequently would be moved to left back or left wing back, but predominantly obviously a midfielder. But it, it, I think it's very interesting when you see what happens in a couple of seasons time. His biggest moments this season for Forrest were his two goals against Leeds in a 4-2 victory, a goal in which he rounded the goalkeeper and then of course that good finish from him from the edge of the box. Great goal. His goal against Aston Villa, a bit of a fluke goal really. Strangely though, in the 1920 season, Colback wouldn't be permanently signed by Forrest, which no Forrest fan could quite understand. We needed 
end of the midfielder at the time, I remember, and Colbat would have been the obvious one. Due to Colbat not coming back to Forest, this would mean that he would be completely frozen out of proceedings at Newcastle, spending an entire season in the dark. It must have been the toughest period of his career by quite some distance, because the entire season, he wasn't even close to Newcastle's side, not even in the cup games. When he would eventually come back and permanently sign for Forest in the 2020-21 season, things would be a bit different for Forest. We just missed out on the playoffs, so it was a tough thing to take. And we didn't just miss out. <clears throat> Six goal swing happened. But Colback came back into a club in that kind of scenario. Maranak has went a bit mental and signed 14 players. Little did we know that's nothing at all compared to what happened last year. That, on top of the fact that we then hired Chris Hutton, and the fact that Colback wouldn't have played any football whatsoever for an entire year, no match sharpness or probably very little match fitness, it meant that he really struggled and he just was not the same player. And it was sad to see, was that year out of football really the difference? Like, is he, is he not the same Jack Colback anymore? What was the point in permanently signing him? And it's unfortunate because the second half of that season under lockdown as well, no fans in the grounds, another key factor as to why he struggled and the whole club struggled I should say really. He would only see 39 minutes of football in the final six months of that season. That's tough, that's very tough. Despite being this out of favour, he'd actually start the next season in the starting 11, mainly due to the lack of squad depth. And Colback didn't do anything too spectacular again unfortunately, but he can't really blame him for that because the entire club at the time was uh, very toxic. But thankfully for him and for everyone, Chris Hutton would be fired at this stage and Steve Cooper would come in. What a bloke. What a man. Uh, now I can cheer up now talking about this. And immediately, as soon as Cooper put Cole back into the side, and when Cooper came in, I thought he's going to look at Cole back and just think, yeah, he's, 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 not, he's not it. He's not it. We're just going to shove him to one side. But no. He gave him a chance. He brought him off the bench against Barnsley. And he was a different man. A different man. He looks so much more energetic. He looks fitter. He looks sharper. He just looks like his old self again. And it was really good to see. I remember actually saying in the video I did at the time, Colbach's playing well. Insert clip. Colbach's playing well. Colbach's playing very well. And it wasn't just a one-off. I mean, having said this, the whole team was suddenly playing better because of Steve Cooper, but Colback specifically here was playing very well and he would, not long later, become absolutely integral to this team. Scoring a great goal against Preston, a half volley, a final minute equaliser against QPR, he became crucial. Due to Max Lowe's loan from Sheffield United, of course he couldn't play against them in that match, so Colback would play at left back to replace him. But that wouldn't be just a one-off because Lowe was unavailable. Lowe would end up getting injured not long later against Reading away from home. Thank God we don't have to do that anymore. And suddenly, Colback was playing at left back again regularly. Or I should really say this time, left wing back. This central midfielder suddenly was not only really good again, back in favour, but playing out of position, even though obviously he's played there before, but it's not his first position and he's just making it look straightforward. We can't not talk about this season without that goal being mentioned. Absolutely spectacular volley against West Brom. I really felt he meant it. Maybe he was just kind of hoofing it into the area, hoping it might go in, or Suvich, who was the closest to the ball, would get on the end of it, but Suvich didn't need to, because Colbert managed to get it there in time. 2022-23 season, of course, naturally, with Colbert being 33 at this stage, he was gonna be a little bit you know, less important technically in the side, with Forrest having to sign a lot of players, and then also, unfortunately for him, due to two injuries throughout this season, Colbert would play a lot less. In fact, 16 appearances throughout the course of the whole season in all competitions, 11 in the Premier League. The only real consistent period he had was in February time when he started three games in a row against West Ham, Everton, and Man City. Not in that order. He played all those matches, did well. And it was just so amazing to see, you know, we've got all these new players here and here's Colback coming back in, now he's fit and, and firing again. And he's starting games against Man City and doing really well. And he's just the ultimate professional. He stepped up when we needed him to. Even though they weren't playing as much, he'd been injured. He just came into the side, made it look easy. A workhorse, a grafter. And that is what I remember Jack Colback for. Just you can trust him in 
any scenario. Captain kind of play, been captain of course for Forest in the past. And I've got no bad things in the slightest as I said about Goldback, only good memories. And of course, he's now left the club in release, probably the right thing for him and for Forrest. He could fit into pretty much any championship side, I reckon, and do a good job. And I hope he I hope he gets that. That is the story of Jack Colback. If you have enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Subscribe to Rads if you're new. I haven't done any video essays for quite some time before this one. Quite simply because I'd run out of ideas. I just thought that this one would be a really good one to do. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Thank you.